my tips. Welcome to another Tech Bite Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about an application named TDAR. It's an application used to compress your video files using a higher quality codec that will reduce the, the size of those videos that you download from the internet so that you can maximize the amount of videos that you can put into your hard drives so you can maximize your space and this is a very good application i think you will find it very very useful especially if you have a small amount of space to store your files it's going to be your best friend and uh yeah that's going to be well, that's going to be all that we're going to be covering today and uh, remember if you like the content like and subscribe thank you very much for being here and let's get to it On today's video, we're going to be talking about an application named TDAR. This application is located at github.com slash have a gitget slash TDAR. And this is an application that is used to perform audio and video library analytics, transcoding and remoxing automation. So basically it can analyze the media files in your system like your music and your video files and tell you details about it like which codec is being used which container it's being used to hold the audio and video tracks and it allows you to also change or convert the type of codec that is used for that for example let's say you have a video that is on H.264, which used to be like the, the normal, the standard. Now, but you are interested in converting your videos to H.265, which is the new way of converting that keeps the same quality of file, but reduces the amount of disk space that you need to hold that file to almost like a half of it. So it's, it's really good, it reduces the amount of space that your video files can hold in your NAS. However, there's a caveat here. For example, if you convert to uh, H.265, you get that advantage of the, having the files occupying less space. But when you're trying to play that file back, you need to perform more computing calculations to actually display the content so that's a trade-off less space but more processing at the time of playback but if, if you have a decent computer uh, and your plex server is running on a decent computer it, it should be okay it should be more than enough especially if you have like a graphics card connected to that then you can allow it to do hardware transcoding which will be a lot faster than if you try to use a cpu to transcode the video file so in my opinion it's really worth it to install this application because it allows your NAS space to be maximized. So yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's go ahead and go into our Synology NAS and we're going to go looking for TDAR. In TDAR, we don't have a Linux server image, so we would have to download the one from Have a Git Get, which is the actual uh, developer of that application. So we just uh, double click it or right click and select the latest and you say download then we just wait for it it should be about two gigs i had already downloaded it so that's why it says this uh very quickly that it was downloaded but yeah it would take a little bit of time it's a pretty big image compared to the other ones that we have been installing but it's worth it it's really worth it so let's go ahead and start building it so let's double click the image and we click next here we're going to rename this tdar and enable research limitation enable auto restart as usual we click advanced settings and here we're going to make some changes because there's a few amount of things that we have to add here so the first thing as usual is we're going to make sure that our time zone is in our right place so for me that's america new york and the process user ID 1026, the process group ID 100, and let's see what else. Okay, for now we're good. So let's let's go and check the other variables that we need to put in here because there's several that we need to put. Okay, 
so let's check for the web ui port do we have that in here okay it says here web ui port 8265 so that's right server port 8266 and node port 8267 okay that's good this means that on this port we would be reaching the user interface our server endpoint is going to be this one and the internal transcoding node if we enable it it's going to be on this uh, port so oh, but, and that's internally to the container this is not what we're exposing the u mask is correct 002 this thing that says in container i'm i'm uh, um, assuming that it also refers to the internal transcoding node so i'm going to leave it like true because we want an internal node here there, there's a possibility for you to install another image that is only the the node like the agent node that performs the transcoding but we're not going to cover that on the video okay additionally let's see uh, the node id i don't see that so we have to add that let's say node id let's call it internal node okay what else if you have an nvidia card connected to your to your nas you can say nvidia driver capabilities all and nvidia visible devices all and it'll allow you to do the hardware transcoding using your nvidia card so it's good to to do that if that's the case and yeah, that's, I would say that's for now, that's all the environment variables that we need to put if I'm understanding that this actually means the internal node. So if that's not the case, then we'll come back and add that one. So we can save here. Oh, module link, node link. Okay, let's get rid of that because I don't know what those means. All right, save and continue. And now we have the ports. But in our case, if I'm not mistaken, the last port that we used was 8091, so let's use 8092 for the user interface, and then 8093 and 8094 for the server and the node. And we go next. And here we're going to add a few folders. First, we're going to go into Docker configs, but we don't have a folder for TDAR, so we're going to come here and create one for TDAR, and then we're going to pick it. Okay, and then after that, we're going to also add our the location of our media. So in here, we'll pick media, the, the base folder. We're not going to specify one there. So we select that. And then in here, this is going to be mapped to app configs. It's different for this application since this is not a Linux server image. They decided to put the configuration file in another location. So we use that. And here we're gonna, we're gonna uh, mount that in the slash media directory. So now we go next, we leave it all as it is, we validate the information and we click done. And if everything is successful and correct, that means that it should build our container and our container should start and we should see that it listens on the port that we specified. So let's refresh this and monitor it and make sure that everything works okay starting tdar server done okay all right listening already so that should be good we should be able now to then open into our nas and put port 8092 which is what we specified and here we go we have the user interface for tdar and this is our uh, notifications of changes, like the change log for the application. We can X out of here. And we need to validate a few things. First, I'm not seeing the node here. Yeah, no TDAR nodes detected. So that means that the container or the in container flag was actually not what I thought it was. So let's go back and fix that. Let's go on stop this and once it stops we're gonna edit it and then we're gonna put in the settings here 
we're gonna switch that to internal no internal not okay and that should be true so let's save that and put this again let's remove that note link there we go and now we save this and let's try it again and see if it can see the internal note all right let's monitor this starting okay listening perfect let's refresh here all right and uh, here we go we have our internal node which is great that means that our container not only gives us the interface here to control everything but also has the ability to transcode files so now that we see this we can proceed with the configuration of the application And now that TDAR is running, we can go over the things that we see here so that we can get a better idea what we can do in here. If we click on the TDAR name here, that'll be like the main dashboard. We could say the first block in here has like the server overview information, which tells you, you know, how much of the operating system memory is being used, how much of the operating system CPU is being used, and in here it gives us details about the nodes that we currently have connected to TDAR. It tells us that we have one node, which is the internal node that we named, which is inside this container. And we have a session ID there, and we currently have zero transcode CPU, zero transcode GPU, zero health check CPU, and zero health check GPU. Um, up here it tells us the time and the memory of the process that is being used. So that's pretty straight up, okay? In here, we get details about the nodes on the second block. And in here, uh, we have two options. We can click on all and it'll give us this, which shows us that we have one node. But if we click on that node, we get more details about that specific node. And that's gonna be important because here's where we do changes to how we want that node to behave. Uh, the node, has the name internal node, has the session ID of that. That's the IP address, it's local to this container, so that's why it's 127.001. And it gives us the information about the process memory that it's using, the CPU and the RAM. And in here, we have some important things. Uh, first thing, if we click here where it says transcode CPU, this is telling the machine how many cores or threads it's going to use to do transcoding using the CPU. If we do not have a graphics card in our machine, then we would use CPU transcoding. In this case, honestly, don't put too much. I would say only put one because that's going to peg your CPU real hard when it's working on things. So just, just do one. However, if you have a GPU, like an NVIDIA card or something, put at least three of those for the, an NVIDIA card. And if you have some other type of card, well, you have to test it basically, but basically anywhere from between two and uh, one and three would be good. Um, leave at one one. Health check. This is just to check the files to make sure that they're healthy, that there's no problems with them. You can do both of this with one of each, the GPU and the CPU, because we have an option that we allow this, the GPU to do some checks too. So those are the main things. Now we have here an option button and we have a log button. If we click on log, we're gonna see the logs of that server. If we go and click on the options, that's important. We need to go into options here. We see the JSON code that basically represents the configuration of this um, node. And if we scroll down a, li a little bit here, we see important things, right? In here, if we have a graphics card, we can specify, for example, if we have a dedicated Intel graphics card, we can use QSV as the hardware encoding um, type or if we have nvidia we use nvenc or if you don't want to specify you just want to let it do automatically you can just leave it at any 
and then here the allow gpu workers to do cpu tasks enable that because that's gonna let the uh, gpu to do the checks also and in here i'm not gonna touch anything else but here's something important that you can do if since it pegs your cpu when it's converting files when it's transcoding you can actually tell it to only do that on certain hours of the day so for example we could put a schedule and then we could say in midnight to one in the morning i want to use one cpu transcode and one health cpu transcode right and like that basically you can um, make changes here if you do it on the top here that's going to be applied to everything but if you do it on the on the left of the hour it's going to be for that specific hour so in this case we do that then we enable one of everything in that time so you can say okay i know i'm not going to be using the computer from midnight to eight in the morning so you could come here and do this and the schedule will allow this node to only transcode during those hours so that was something that i think is useful that you could do but for the purposes of the video i'm not gonna put a schedule i'm just gonna let it do all the time and those are the main changes that i'm gonna do here so there's no need to save you just click here and the changes have have already been saved basically yeah that's the part on the nodes there's nothing else if we scroll down here we're gonna see the staging section this is gonna let us know which files are going to be put in in processing mode basically in the queue to start processing and you'll be able to track them here and down here is where you have this the status and in here you can see a lot of information about oh let me make sure that on the staging selection always check that there auto accept successful transcodes and um, down here you can see a lot of information about your files that have been transcoding or are transcoding uh, you can basically give priority to transcodes over health checks or vice versa and if you have any errors you can also check the errors here and you will see it eventually so for now that's all the changes we're going to make in the tdar section now we're going to go into the libraries section we're going to click on the plus sign here and we're going to say that this library is going to be named anime because this is what's going to take charge of our anime files so here we're going to say we watch a folder we scan on start we check for closed captioning and in here we're going to specify the media folder that we set and we click on show browser here and then we select anime and then we hide the browser so now we have media anime but we made sure by scanning here that that we can actually have access to that folder so that that was what i wanted to show and then here on the scanner settings we can say that we want to scan the folder every 60 seconds for example we enable that and in here we're gonna do a hourly scan also and that's uh basically it for this part here this is looking good then we go oh make sure this is checked then we go into the transcode cache the transcode cache is necessary because we're gonna basically create a new file with the new encoding that we need so we need to create another folder that we didn't have and we're going to use it here so let's go into our nas real quickly open file station let's go into our media and then we're going to create a new folder here that is going to be named transcoding and this is where the temporary files are going to be stored while it is doing the processing of the files so now if we come here we should be able to do media transcoding and if we want to make sure that it can see it we can just put media show browser and then select transcoding and we're telling it store the temporary files here and that's it for this part we ignore anything here in the output folder in the filters we do nothing here at least i don't you can actually apply some filters here and then in transcode options this is where the magic 
occurs. By default, it's gonna have a plugin stack. It's gonna have like an order of things that are gonna be processed in here. So the first thing is it removes image file, uh, image formats from the file. So if it finds that there are any unwanted image formats in the file, it removes those streams. Then after that, it reorders the streams. So if you go here, it says it will move the video stream to the front and then it'll be able to recognize the codec correctly. Then after it does that, we have the option here to do the CPU transcoding. So that's what it, it does what it says. Files that are not in H.265 will be transcoded into H.265 using the CPU. And basically we're gonna, in my case I like, I like MKB files, so I'm gonna leave it as MKB and I don't change anything else. If you have an NVIDIA GPU and you want to only do everything with the graphics card, you can just come here and disable the CPU and then come here into the NVIDIA GPU and enable that one. And that'll allow you to do the transcoding using only your graphics card. And that basically says, you know, it's going to be tra uh, transcoding, but only using the graphics card. So that's the case if you have an NVIDIA card. And in this case, you just change the container if you want. I leave it as MKD. I'm not going to do any cutoff in here, and I'm just going to leave everything as default. So that's the way it would work for me. So I currently do not have an NVIDIA card in my NAS. So I'm going to disable this and I'm going back to the CPU and I'm going to enable that one. Okay. So then the last thing is going to check the file size to make sure that, you know, there was something, some progress here. I like this to be at 100. I don't want to convert anything to more than what I had before. So that's my upper bound. Cannot be bigger than what I already had. And that's it. Oh, I forgot to mention, in, in my case, for example, the NAS machine does not have a usable graphic card. I do have an NVIDIA card, but it's too old, so it's not compatible with the v -Enc encoding and decoding. So, but if you do have, for example, an NVIDIA card, or if your embedded processor has a graphics card in it, for example, if you have an i7 or i9 or something like that that has an Intel graphics card in it, you can modify the steps in the plugin stack. For example, let's say I have an i7 with an Intel graphics card in it. I could use QSV for the transcoding. So in that case, I would come here into the plugins and I, for example, would search for QSV in the community section and there's different plugins that you can use for QSV. For example, this one here, I think this is the, the best one, the Dr. DD one. So you can literally grab it and dump it here into the stack and then you can click here and you have the options here. So if you enable this, if you have a, a graphics card in your processor, like an Intel graphics card, you can use this for transcoding and then here you would just change settings. If it's an NVIDIA card, you would put true here. If it's the Intel embedded, you would put true here. So in that case, for example, you would do this. And by doing this, then you would use that embedded graphics card in your processor. So I just wanted to let you know that and also how you can just add and remove different plugins from the plugin stack. For example, if I want to remove this one now, I just click on it and then click here on remove and that'll just get rid of it. So that's how you add and remove plugins. So we're good here. There is nothing else to do on this part. And then the health check, you can check here what it does, that it's quick. We don't want to go thorough unless you really, really need that. And then on the schedule, once again, you can work on the schedule to specify the times that you want it to be able to work. Okay, so that's all that we have for this library. Now we can go over here in options and we can say do a scan and look for all the files in that library and see what you can get. And then it says, are you sure you want to do that? Okay. And now it starts scanning. And as you can see, it's finding stuff. So if we go back into the TDAR section here, we should see files slowly coming up in here. 
So let's give it time to do the scanning and we should eventually see, here we go, files. So in scanning our anime library, we found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven episodes of Bleach. Oh, it's finding more now, so perfect. It is doing the scan. It tells us that currently the files are in H.264 codec. They're in resolution of 720p, which makes sense because that's what I picked when I set to download and the current size. And if we go a little bit up here, we can see that currently there's nothing in the stage to be processed and there's nothing here to be processed but why is that well remember we need to specify the amount of threads that we want to use and in here it looks like i don't have anything so let's say that we want it to have one of each one cpu and one gpu for health check and transcode and let's see what happens after this eventually it should pick it up pick the change up so it already picked it up I didn't have to do anything I just had to be patient as you can see now here it is doing a health check on the files using both the CPU and the GPU and it also is transcoding using the CPU and the GPU it's using the processor for episode 23, it's using the, the graphics card for episode 25 and we just have to be patient because that obviously is something that takes time. It did the first two steps of the plugins, now it's on the third one which is the actual transcoding and as I was saying, here's the thing, when it transcodes using the CPU, that CPU is gonna get pummeled that CPU is gonna get hit hard and it's gonna be used completely so you just have to be mindful of that if you are using your NAS for watching your content for example then maybe you will benefit from having a schedule and only doing the transcoding on times that you're not really using it or you're sleeping or usually you're not at home things like that but yeah it is working it is pretty slow but it is working. We have a total of 12 FPS uh, being transcoded, six with the CPU, six with the GPU, and it's gonna take a good amount of time. It says it's gonna be about two hours for both episodes to transcode. But we can see that it is working. We can see that we can see the details of the process here. Like I said, the staging section tells us that we're working on two episodes because we only have two threads and they're currently being processed and if we go down here then we can see like all the other details that I was talking about here we have the queue for transcoding if we go to the left here on hold if we have anything on hold it'll appear here in here transcode success or not required if we have a file that doesn't need transcoding or that has already completed transcoding it'll show up in here and it'll tell us what the old size was and what the new size is after the transcoding and in here if we go to error cancelled if there was a problem we can see here what happened here if we go into health check queue we can see the checks that are currently being done to files sometimes it takes a little bit of time to update especially when it's using all the CPU to transcode so be patient if that happens and then here when it says the health check resulting in healthy we can see all those here and if there's any errors with the health check we can also check it here so basically for now let's just give it time to do its thing and we'll be back when this is done all right, I left this overnight to process the video files and let's see what happened. If we scroll down here, we see that the node is currently not doing anything because it's done processing the files. There's nothing in the staging queue. And if we come down here, there's nothing in the transcoding queue. Everything seems good. It says that everything is healthy and there was a success on the 13 episodes. And if we come down here, here's the important thing that we want to see. We have 13 episodes and in those 13 episodes in general you see that the size of the video got 
cut a lot on some of them. Some of them even like half of it. This one was originally 642 megs and now it's only 315 megs. Some of them didn't uh, reduce a lot, like this one only reduced a little bit, like 100 megs. But hey, it's 100 megs that we saved. This one reduced enough, this is more than 50%. So as we can see, the transcoding actually saves you a good amount of space. So if we go up here to the very top where it says stats, we'll see exactly how much we have saved. If we go here, we have this nice little thing here that says to us that we have 13 files. 13 of those were transcoded, so all the files were transcoded, and it saved us this amount of space. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good amount of space saved. So yes, 4. Point, I mean 3.5 gigs, that's a good amount of space. And it gives us details here about the status of the transcodes and the health and about the videos that we have in our library. It tells us which codec, which is H265. It tells us that it's being held in Matroska files and the quality 720 for all of them. So you can see good information here. It was very good. It saved us a good amount of space here. So I highly recommend that you use TDAR. It's a very good application if you're trying to maximize the use of your hard disk. And that's going to be all for this video. I hope you liked it. Remember, uh, if you like the channel, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. Also, remember, I'm not monetizing this channel. You would not see YouTube videos on it. But if you want to support me to continue making videos like this, feel free to go to the description below. There are links there where you can donate with PayPal or Bitcoin if you want. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.